Okay, friend, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been doing well. New setup again, I know. I'm just trying to try different things out to see what works best for me. It feels more homey though, right? It's like a friend to friend talking. So I want to talk about something that I'm very passionate about and that is getting you a job. I want you to succeed, especially since you've been putting so much hard work into learning how to program or design. The hardest part should be learning the material, not getting the job. So if you have been applying for more than three months and you haven't heard anything back, here are some things that you should consider. And I'm gonna break this down into two different parts. It's going to be if you haven't gotten an interview or coding challenge back, and if you are getting interviews but you're not passing the interviews. So do you have meaningful projects on your resume? And I don't mean like a calculator. I mean projects that um, encompass, yes, right? It is today. Encompass different concepts, use APIs, or similar to the projects at the companies that you want to work for. They should definitely be utilizing more than one data structure. They should be utilizing a database and manipulating database. So for instance, if you want to work for Twitter, let's say, then you should probably have a project where you're utilizing the Twitter API. But start projects that you're passionate about because the more passionate you are about it, the more willing you are to learn new concepts to implement what you want the project to be like. Not only will you become a better programmer, but it'll show companies that you have a passion for what you do. Also, are you using keywords? These are some of the keywords that I want on your resume. APIs, runtime, that's an important one. So you wanna try and squeeze that in there somewhere and as many times as you can. Big O notation, which is, I mean, the same thing as runtime. Data structures, unit testing, debugging. Those are only a few of the words that I think stand out a lot when it comes to new developers and resumes. Also use keywords for the company that you're applying for. And I mean this as in a lot of websites or hiring, what am I trying to say? Job boards or whatever, wherever you're applying to, a lot of those places use programs to weed out potential resumes that don't include keywords that are in the job description. So definitely look at the job description and see uh, some of the words and qualifications that they have and are looking for and add those, like sprinkle them, sprinkle them into the resume. Are you putting your name out there? I mean, as in participating in talks, panels, GitHub, why do I keep forgetting what that's called? Oh, contributions. <laughs> are you participating in GitHub contributions? Are you going to hackathons? Are you communicating in your local tech community? Even starting a YouTube or some type of social media where you can help others will one, not only improve your coding skills because I am a firm believer in teaching others is the best way to learn a concept. And two, it shows companies that you are passionate, again, about what you do. And spreading your name out there will catch a lot of people's eyes that you won't know have connections to a company or uh, the job that you are looking for. Also, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's really important to want to give back the knowledge that you've learned. So that's something that you should be doing regardless. Okay, so let's do a check here. I'm gonna say a list of questions and you're gonna answer yes or no. Are you completely comfortable with implementing something using an array? A linked list, a stack, queue, heap. Are you comfortable describing what big O is to an eight-year-old? And are you easily able to describe the runtime of all of your programs? Can you answer a hard level on leak code in less than two hours? So if you said no to any one of those things, then you need to turn that into a yes. Not by lying, I mean as in you need to be working on that because all of those things I just listed are very important when it comes to the job. Especially if you're applying for FANG companies, um, leak code is a great tool to use because one, a lot of the companies, their interview questions are similar to, if not exactly like, the hard levels of leak code. Again, 
do not give up on leak code because I know it's really tough, so is Hacker Rank, but the more often you do it, the slightly easier you'll notice that it gets because your way of thinking is changing. So you definitely want to be challenged. That's how you learn and grow. Also reading, cracking the coding interview from cover to cover. Friend, if you don't know, now you know. But that book is basically the developer's Bible. Like it was in every single one of my classes sitting there. It was at my student developer job sitting there. It was sitting there in the library, the dean's office. I couldn't escape that book. So it's really important to go through that book as much as you can when you're preparing for an interview, even in the process of learning because they reteach or teach for the first time a lot of concepts that are extremely important for interviews. And she's teaching you how to pass the interview and everything that you need. So I would definitely recommend getting that book. You can find it anywhere. And also practicing the problems that she has in the book. Facebook groups and Slack slash Discord groups that are dedicated to interviewing and getting jobs. There are a lot of groups, especially if you are a minority, there are a lot of groups that are dedicated to your specific demographics that can help you get an interview and help you pass the interviews. So I would definitely look into those as well. Practicing in front of people. Friend, do not let the first time you practice in front of somebody be at your dream interview. Don't do that, did that, don't. It will be a disaster. Practicing how to code by yourself versus practicing in front of somebody are two different things. It's kind of like you practicing a speech in front of the mirror and then going in front of a group of people and doing it. You're gonna notice like your heart is racing, you're stuttering, this and that. So you want to make sure that you are whiteboarding in front of your friends, in front of your siblings, in front of your peers. You can even go on certain websites that will sit with you and practice interviewing with you with people who have actually done the interview process. So it's really important to practice solving problems in front of people. I cannot stress that enough because in interviews, you are talking to the interviewer. Like, and if you're not, by the way, talking to the interviewer, that's a problem because they're expecting that. They're expecting you to be explaining exactly what you're doing at every step, to explain your thought process, because they wanna see that you can communicate and they wanna see the way that you think. Which leads me to my next point, which is start talking during your interviews. And I don't care how stupid you think you sound or that you think you're gonna say something stupid, I promise you, they're expecting to hear you say words. So definitely do not shy away from explaining what you're doing, writing clear and concise variable names and a, like all that stuff. But again, a lot of that is in the, that book I mentioned, Cracking the Coding Interview. And that's it. Those are some things that you can consider if you have yet to uh, get an interview or you have yet to pass an interview. Hopefully you find some places where you can improve. I promise you, it always is hard in the beginning. We've all been through the learning process and the job pump before. Once you get to the other side, it is sweet. So I promise it's worth it. I've, you've heard me say that before. You can see it on my channel, my day in the life and all that stuff and my lifestyle on my Instagram. I promise you it's worth it. You will be rewarded for all of your hard work because you get a job where you can be creative every single day and you get financial freedom <laughs> to be frank. So good luck friend. You can do it. Keep at it. Stay focused and practice code every single day. Take care of your mental health and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.